Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Nace Pink Bookshelf. My name is Nace and for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video. And today's video is going to be my February wrap up. And for the month of February, I read about 26, 25 and a half books. I probably read more than that. Um, so I do have my Goodreads app open on my phone just to make sure I am mentioning all of the books that I read. But I am not going to do this in any particular order. I am going to... Um, Actually, I am. I'm going to start off with Blackathon wrap-up. Then I'm going to do my wrap-up for Tome Tapu. Then we're going to get into my Valentine wrap-up. And then I'll share all the other books that I read that I completed in the month of February. So, like I said, diving into Blackathon 2020, I did participate this year. And it was so much fun. I had a blast reading all of these books. I didn't get to all of the books I wanted to read for the month of February. I think I had about three books left over no three books one two yeah I had three books left over to read for Blackathon which I will be moving one of them into the month of March but anyways so Blackathon this year was split up into two teams team SFF sci-fi fantasy which I picked and then team contemporary I did however complete all eight prompts there were four prompts each team and yeah so let's just dive in so the first book I don't have a physical copy of I did read the ebook and listen to the audiobook and that was The Deep by River Solomon this one is for Janelle Monet at read an LGBTQIA sci-fi fantasy book with a black protagonist this book I gave a 3.75 star rating I really wanted to love this at least give it a full four but um I don't know I, I just could not fully connect to the story um, I did love the fact that they turned the slaves that were thrown overboard into mermaids. I loved it. Um, I loved that they were non-binary characters. I loved um, the romance that was slightly there. Um, I enjoyed Yetsu as a character. I enjoyed the um, exploration of depression and um, self-identity. But I just, there was something about it that I just couldn't connect to. And I don't think that it was my type of um, a book that I would enjoy but I did give it a 3.75 star rating, so that's that. So for prompt number two, that was Nadia Akua for, and that was to read a work of Afrofuturism. And for that, I went with The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. This is the first book in the Broken Earth trilogy. This book was so good. I gave it a 4.75 star rating. I loved this book from start to finish. Um, I will say the only reason why I could not give it a full five is because at the beginning, it took me about seven chapters or five, really, to really dive in. And there was something about Esum and the way that her chapters were written that kind of like threw me for a loop because they're written in second person um I did enjoy the other characters um I'm, I don't know why I'm like getting a brain fart at this moment um but Cyanide I did love um Demaya I loved I loved Alabaster Alabaster was so freaking amazing and then the pirate that they met towards the end of the book I can't remember his name for the life of me but I enjoyed him um Esun is a very 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 strong character she went through a lot um she pushed through she survived but I just I love this and I cannot wait to read the sequel I do own the entire trilogy on ebook but I really want the physical books because I tabbed this sucker up. this was amazing i highly recommend it. if you're looking for an awesome sort of sci-fi fantasy um novel with black characters in it this was great this will like just it it takes it about for me um but the only reason why I could, like i said i couldn't give it a full five is because it took me a minute to dive in with that second person um narrative it it threw me for a loop and that twist oh god if you read the book you know this was i'm talking about i was not expecting that you know i wasn't but it was beautiful. I loved um, and enjoyed the magic system. I just wish the magic system was explored a little bit more. So I do have high hopes um, for the sequel that the magic system will be explored a bit more. But this was great and I definitely would recommend some of you picking this up. It was awesome. So prompt number three was David F. Walker and that was to read a sci-fi fantasy comic or graphic novel with a black protagonist. For me, I went with Black Sands, The Seven Kingdoms by Manuel Gody and David Lenormand. Um, this is the ultimate edition so it has a few... Um, of the comics bound up in this one book. This was so stinking adorable. I loved it. It's fantasy based off of Egyptian culture and um, it does have a little bit of Sparta in um, what is the other? I can't remember the other place. It, like, I'm trying to figure it out because it's in the back. Um, Athens and Sparta. So you do get an, an, a view of both of them but um, I love the artwork. I'm trying to get to a page. I love the artwork in this book. It is epic. Um, I think the children are amazing. 
the drawing in this was phenomenal i did give it a four star just because i feel like that ending was a little bit abrupt um and as much as it was action-packed i just wanted a little bit more from the children um but yeah this this was epic definitely would recommend it if you're looking for a great comic or graphic novel or if you will um that features black characters this was phenomenal and again the artwork on this i need to find specific like pages to show you guys because these children are like they're bad like she was giving me storm vibes here yes but um i loved it gave it four stars definitely would recommend it the fourth and final prompt for team sff was danielle clayton and it is to read a sci-fi book with a cunning ambitious protagonist now for this i started this book in february but i did not get to finish it until march and um yeah so that's going to be a river a river of royal blood by amanda joy um why fantasy this i ended up giving a 3.75 actually i bumped it down to 3.5 because i had to really sit on it um i wanted to love this but one i did not get the north african um kind of vibes at all like no representation two the magic system was not fully explained and three that ending was very anticlimactic um so yeah did, didn't really get it i did enjoy baka i enjoyed fallon i enjoyed um akito i, I think the romance between akito um and the other character was really awesome um i love that this had some lgbtq rep in it and i like the magic system but again it wasn't fully explained the world there's a lot that could have been expanded on so i'm looking forward to definitely picking up the sequel when it comes out and really hoping that it's better explored in those books but um yeah i loved eva eva did annoy me at first she really did um isadora was okay um this was another one of those books in which you had the father being more of the loving character or the loving parent for the main character rather than the mother the mother was very much pissing me off in this she pissed me off to a t but it was good loved it and um you know it was all right not it was good pretty much i did enjoy it but i wanted to love it and i just it took me a minute like at first i was gonna give it a four and then i bumped it down to three four seven five but then as i thought about it even more and watched other reviews i kind of agreed with other people so that's why i bumped it back down to a um 3.5 star rating because there was just some stuff missing um and you know i i want to be fair with my ratings um and as much as i wanted to love it i just i couldn't but um i definitely will be picking up the sequel when it comes out because this cover is stunning stunning and this is going to be eva and her sister isadora so yes eva lane excuse me but yeah we have that okay so now moving on to the four prompts for team contemporary so the first one was i'm probably going to say this wrong but bassy ikpi 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 probably saying it wrong i'm sorry but um it is to read a work explaining mental health and disability in black folks for that i went with queenie by candace cardi williams um <laughs> I gave this a 3.75 star rating. I know that a lot of black women were really irritated with this book and I definitely get why they were upset about this book but I definitely enjoyed it. Why I could not give it a full four stars is because this book was completely like 100% negative in my opinion. I really didn't see any good portions until the last page. Um, The main character, what is her name? Queenie just... Mm, Queenie Jenkins, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain my feelings about her. She definitely has some mental health issues going on. Um, depression for sure. Living in the past. Um, I I did not care for the way that the men in this book looked at her. Which I get it. Um, she was black. These men that she were messing with were mainly white guys and Indian guys and things like that. She did not really feel herself attracted to black men because of a past situation but the men that she chose were dummies um i did not like them i did especially the indian type of dude that tried to sound real black i mm, mm -mm, i don't even know what his name was but i didn't care for him well i'm gonna find his name because he pissed me off like and her boyfriend tom um i definitely understood tom i definitely understood why he could not stay with her um but also there were certain parts when she had flashbacks that i was just like he should have been more of a man especially when it came to his family because they definitely did disrespect her quite a lot um and they did it in a way that wasn't like outright but you know they did they, they definitely threw some shade towards queenie and um 
sometimes the way Queenie handled, handled certain things wasn't okay, but then sometimes Tom didn't really kind of protect her. So I kind of get it, but um, yeah, I gave it 3.75 star rating because this was a really pretty much just straight negative for me. And um, as much as I enjoy those dark novels, I still would like to see some good at the end of the light. And this really didn't have any good. Um, the situation with her friend, Cassandra, I think that was her name. I think it was Cassandra. I, I don't even remember the girl's name. But I did not like that scene, like, whatsoever. I'm really looking for her name. Because I know I highlighted it. Uh, Cheska, I think that's how you say her name. Cheska, I, I don't know how to say it. But her bestie was freaking oh yeah cassandra pissed me off that, yeah her name is cassandra um her other friend cheska i think that's how you say it don't know um i loved her <laughs> she at first she annoyed me but i really did love her and i love the different representations you have in this book jamaican um ugandan i think it is i don't know what any other characters were but um it was good but it was very negative as you can see i have a lot of blue tabs and i didn't want to tab this completely blue um i have a few green tabs one pink tab one orange tab some yellow tabs so blue tabs for me are things that are sad or make me angry yellow tabs are for the funny portion so anything that makes me laugh um green is for anything that's a quote that i want to remember pink is romance platonic or um between a guy and a female and then orange is for um plot so you know then the dude ted from her job it, it was a it was, yeah so 3.75 star rating then the next prompt was marlon james it's to read a work not set in the u.s and not centered on black american so kind of like the black american story of like poverty racism and things like that for that i went with get a life play brown by talia hibbert oh my god this was so stinking cute i thoroughly enjoy this chloe brown is just so funny she's so smart and intelligent then you have red i loved him so much the romance between them was very comical if you're not into those um cute comedic romances this will not be for you there is sex involved in this book but it's not heavy so um i didn't find a problem with me reading this at all um i did give it a four stars i wanted to love it but there was some things I wanted to happen that didn't happen. And I, I have mixed feelings. So I did give it a four star rating. But I did enjoy it. I did tap up slightly um, some important scenes. Some things that made me laugh. Romances and things like that. But um, yeah, this was pretty darn cute. Adorable. Definitely a book I will find myself rereading over again. Because it's a quick, fun, easy read. And I did listen to the audiobook. Which was awesome. So yeah enjoy this gave it four star the third prompt is alexa martin is to read a lighthearted work that is not set on the struggle and has powerful bonds for that i went with opposite of always by justin a reynolds i adored this so i read this book in january and then i decided to reread it in february but listen to the audiobook this was amazing gave five stars now this does have some problematic scenes <laughs> some problematic issues um going on so this follows oh my god what is his name jack ellison um who's the king of almost this is why i contemporary um and it just follows him in his life and it's very lighthearted in the fact that um there's a lot of comedy involved and yes they do talk about like the struggle but it's not on a serious in-depth type of thing um it's very lighthearted and comical i enjoy the romance between him and kate yes i almost got her name kate um this does have death involved and a little bit of time travel but it's just comedy all around um i love his best friends i love the romance i enjoyed the sort of semi character development um it's, it's it's one of those things where you really don't know if it's character development or not because he was literally reliving the same time over and over and over and over again and you're getting his different experiences and doing those things but by the end of the story i do believe he had a major uh character development so um i enjoyed it love the audiobook the audiobook is even better than the physical book but um yeah this is amazing definitely if i was sorry again like i said there are some problematic issues he does do things um the, the many times that he goes back in time he does mess up some relationships with his best friend he does say some dumb stuff but i feel like in those instances um it's not okay but it's a learning process especially if you're living the same time over and over you're going to make mistakes you're going to try to um make shortcuts that are not right but um i thoroughly enjoyed this jack was amazing him and kate were both queer characters to the t and um i loved it so yeah
And the fourth and final prompt for the team contemporary is to read a book about with a black protagonist that challenges preconceived notions about black people, obviously. And I went with the Soleil by Miss Brittany Morris, gave this five stars. I love this so much. This was everything and more. Um, I did paint my edges lavender, if you can see. I don't know why. Um, it's tabbed up to the gods. But this follows Kiara and the game Slay that she created, which was for its it's marketed and geared towards black kids and you needed a code um in order to play the game and it's all about being nubian kings and queens and it's kind of like wakanda but in a virtual card game kind of world it it's so weird to explain i thoroughly enjoyed it now yes um this does mean that you have to have some sort of uh or rather you would have to suspend your disbelief if you will is that the right way to say it? You guys get what I'm saying, right? You would have to suspend your belief system um, because th to play the game Slay, you have to have a headset, but inside the world of Slay, you can do all these types of movements and flipping and things like that. And I've heard from people who are like gamers and are into tech, tech basically that um, the belief in that was a little bit out there for them. Um, so they couldn't fully enjoy it but with this for me i just dove right in didn't really care about like common sense or whatever this was freaking awesome to me and i think kiara did such a phenomenal job in dealing with the situations there was a death um revolving around her game and um people calling her racist and things like that and she had to deal with a lot of stuff and she was only 17 years old and she also lived in a household where she felt like she had to hide who she truly was um, because she went to an all-white school so at school she had to talk a certain way around her mother her mother wanted her to talk a certain way but then when she was in the world of slay she can talk however she want to talk and be her true self and then she had this boyfriend that uh, we're not gonna talk about this foul this foul dude i don't even forgot i don't forgot this boy name what's his name do they even say his name in this no i i really forgot his name but he pissed me off i need to find his name what is his name is it Marcus? It's not Marcus. It's Malcolm. <sighs> Malcolm pissed me off. For so many reasons. Like, he... He was the worst. Like, mm -mm -mm. He was so pro-black that he didn't know how to have fun. And what he did at the end broke my heart. I was upset that he didn't have any um, repercussions for his actions. I feel like there should have been some repercussions for his actions. Like, for real, for real. But um, I enjoyed it. Five stars. Definitely will be reading this. And I love this book without the dust jacket. Oh, gorgeous. So that's why I also did the, the lavender because I thought it would be cute. But um, this book was everything and more. And I definitely recommend it. Okay, so moving on to Tome Topple. I had five books on my Tome Topple TBR. And um, one of them was The Fifth Season. I already talked about it. So I'm going to talk about the other four books on my TBR. So the first one I did was Elantris or Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. I'm doing this with the Cosmere Along that is being hosted um for the year just click the on screen to go to the video that cast from little book i will post it but i gave it four stars um i enjoyed it a lot it was interesting it took me a minute um i love rare he was a very amazing prince i loved him horizon 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 i think that's how you say his name he was a priest um he was a bit all over the place for me i didn't really care for him up until the end um and then i felt bad for him so he was like one of them characters that i grew to hate and then i ended up loving or enjoying excuse me towards the end and then the princess whose name was serene i'm sorry i have a lot of like books that i read so it's kind of like hard to remember the characters names but princess serene i loved her so much she was very powerful she was headstrong um she didn't allow men to hold her back um and i love the relationship she had with her father and the relationships that she built with a lot of the nobles and the dukes in this world of um oh god what is the world anyway it's not Elantris, but there's another name for where they lived at. Um, there was a character that worked for Freyson. Dilof, Dilaf, Dilof, Dilof. Um, I hated him so much. And the plot twist with him, I... I'm not going to say I wasn't expecting it, but I also wasn't expecting it. Like, I knew there was something more to Dilof because of how he carried himself in the story and the things that he did and said. But I wasn't expecting him to be who he really was. So, it shook me um but this was really great um for brandon sanderson's first novel this was great i did read um warbreaker before reading this i think i gave warbreaker five stars or 4.5 or something like that but um for his first novel i think this is awesome i did tab it up but um yeah definitely enjoyed it then i read kingdom of souls by rena baron gave this four stars i freaking adored a lot of things you guys see the tabs um i 
it took me some time to fully dive into the world which is why i couldn't give it a full five and there were certain aspects of the gods and goddesses that like pissed me off like i felt like they should have did more um i definitely need to know the truth about the demon king and his romance because the ending was like bro what um yeah so four stars i'm not gonna be too long i'm not gonna be long with it because i do have a lot of books so i'm gonna give my quick brief thoughts and move on because there's a lot of books that i don't want this video to be like 40 minutes long so four star rating definitely am excited for the sequel to come out on this book then i read the unwilling by kelly braffitt um i gave this week my five star rating this is a dark novel um a little bit annoying of a read because of the characters and the stupidity and the evil things that they do um but if you're not into dark novels then don't read this um definitely just don't because you're gonna be pissed off but i did enjoy the characters enough um i definitely want to try reading more of her work but um we have this the last book i read for tom Tapu is going to be children of blood and bone by tomi Yemi. this is a reread i decided to reread it because i definitely want to read virtue children of virtue and vengeance like asap um this is a five star read i don't care what no one says i enjoy this um does it have problems yes um can it be problematic yes but did I love it? Yes. Do I still love it? Yes. I still love Zeli. Um, I still Zele, excuse me. I still love Zele. I still love Amari. Amara. Amari? Amari. I don't know why I'm getting names confused. This is why I need to hurry up. Um, Zane is still on them characters just like, who are you, bro? He was like not really important. Inan, as much as he pissed me off, I still love him. Um, and I really just wanted to reread this because of Rowan as a character, because I know that Rowan apparently becomes a main character in the sequel. So I had to reread this for that. Um, this is Diet Spray Edges. I did do black on my book. But um, yeah, I need to re-add my tabs in here because I did um, remove my tabs from out of here as I reread it. But um, yeah, we have this five star. Loved it. Okay, so now going to the books that I read for Valentine's Readathon 2020. Again, a lot of these books were crossover for the multiple um, challenges in the different readathons. So I'm going to share with you guys the four that were not on um any of the other ones because all the other books that i've mentioned previously for both blackathon and tome top were included in this readathon so for prompt number 11 for valentine's which was library lovers month read a book from the library um i went with tribulation Force by tim lahey and jerry b jenkins this is the second book in the left behind series this is a christian fiction sort of sci-fi fantasy dystopian futuristic kind of story it's kind of weird um it's a little bit of everything and um, I gave this four stars. I did listen to the audiobook from my library, which is why I have the physical book here. But I did listen to the audiobook and I love this so much. I'm enjoying the series so far. Um, I definitely will be picking up the third book. I do own the 12 of 13 books. It's a 13 book series. So I do own 12 of the books. And then I own the first two books for the prequel trilogy. So <laughs> your girl about to read the whole series. I'm loving it. The first book was a four stars. This was a four stars. I'm definitely enjoying Rayford as a character. Chloe, um, Buck, and oh, what's the other guy's name? Bruce, I think. Um, Nikolai pisses me off. <laughs> but um, this is basically a story of the rapture and um, the end times pretty much so if you don't know what the rapture is if you've never read the book of revelations in the bible that's what this book is about and it's pretty much it it real it feels realistic to me like i believe that this could truly happen in the world um and i'm just thoroughly enjoying it so four stars um then moving on i did prompt number 12 which is one man's trash to read a book someone unhauled or hated this i kind of cheated on because it is a reread for me um but i went with the kiss quotient by helen huang five star for me i love this this is like i said a reread i love stella and michael they're amazing i wanted to reread this because i will be reading the bride test um soon hopefully which follows kai who is mentioned in this and i wanted to remember who kai was again because i honestly could not remember him i remembered kwan because kwan and michael were like best friends kai was mentioned a few times when they went to the gym to box and things like that but um i'm super excited to read this and i picked this one from starla reads she did put this in her unhaul i think it was her last unhaul of 2019 she unhauled this book um this is contemporary romance and it is amazing i love this book so much it's a clean fire star for me um tabbed it up of course and i definitely would recommend it if you're into romance and don't mind um sex scenes in your books now this book is not like heavily doused in sex but when the sex scenes do come about 
um, they are steamy. So if you have a problem with that, just know that. But um, for a contemporary romance, I definitely thoroughly enjoy this. I could find myself rereading it again for a third, fourth, fifth time. So um, they're quick and easy reads, and they're awesome with the audiobooks as well. So I did reread this with the audiobook paired. Still a five-star read for me, so we had that. Okay, so moving on to prompt 18, which was not my type, read a book out of your comfort zone. And for that, I went with Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett. Now, I read YA contemporary, but I try to stick to the YA contemporary romances. I don't necessarily like YA contemporary that deals with health issues, per se. Um, a lot of the times, just because I feel like um, the authors tend to go astray. But this was out of my comfort zone. It was a five star shoot, five star read for me. Um, this follows Simone Garcia and Miles <laughs> romance. It was so I had to look in there for her name, you guys. Like I said, I read a lot of books, so yeah. Um, but Simone Garcia and I, I loved every aspect about this book. First of all, I loved. Okay, if you don't know what this book is about, first of all, <laughs> this book follows Simone Garcia who has HIV. She's HIV positive, um, but she was born that way. And um, it goes to just her navigating, I think it's her senior year of high school, if I'm not mistaken. Senior year of high school um, and romance and talking about sex and stuff like that. So in this book, she does have two fathers. Her parents are gay um, and I love them so much. They are freaking epic. She calls one dad, she calls one Pops. And um, I think it's Pops that was very much outgoing. Pops is a teacher and dad was a doctor or something like that um but in the story she does fall in love with a guy named miles and miles is very just miles i swoon for him he's one of my puddings i have so many like ya puddings and he is one of my puddings my sweet prize because he was so sweet he was so caring and even when he found out about um someone being hiv positive he did not care like it did not stop him and i loved and respected him as a character um this was amazing but I, I, I'm, it was amazing. Five stars all the way. To, I definitely will read the next book. Um, what I loved is the information about HIV and um, the things that we don't always know as humans. When we hear about HIV, we immediately um, start to say stupid stuff, honestly. But um, learning the things that I found out about in this book, I felt like it was a book that was real gritty and educated me. Um, so I thoroughly enjoyed everything about this book. If you're looking for a book that talks about um, health issues from a YA perspective, definitely it, it's, it's amazing. It's phenomenal. And um, Simone's background and her story. And I love the relationship she has with her parents. Like her fathers are both awesome. Um, and I love the way they're like really supportive they know everything about her they talk about sex openly in this and i love that because a lot of the times when you read ya novels parents are not willing to talk about sex but this one dives deep and i enjoyed it so much um i enjoyed the realness the rawness and i definitely would recommend it if you're looking for a book um that is hard hitting but also sweet and lighthearted at the same time great and the 24th prompt i read um, well, the 24th prompt was shallow and it says, <laughs> read a book you definitely bought for the cover. For that, I did Daughters of Honore by Renee K. Amayo. Um, this cover needs no words. Two black girls, go foiling. So I gave this book four stars. Um, I don't even, I think it's, uh, not, not, Nala, yeah, Nala and, what is her sister? Sinai. So Nala and Sinai. So Okay, so this book follows two twin goddesses in a sense. They're twin goddesses. Yeah. Um, they got separated at birth from their father. Um, and it goes into the history of their parents and heritage and how they got separated. So, so they get separated, they're raised separately in different parts. So Sinai is raised in the palace and Nala is raised in the countryside, I guess. I don't really know what it's called. She's raised in the villages. And um both girls are starting to come into their magic, but they don't really know what it is. And it's just them coming back together and also defeating the Eze um Ochi 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 Chide. I think that's how you say it. Um Nala was the outgoing twin. I enjoyed her so much. Sinai was the more um laid back quiet twin. The Eze he pissed me off. Um there was parts when I thought I could like him, but he was just too stupid for my liking. Like, he was dumb. Um, the only reason why I could not give this a five star is because of the pacing. And um, the magic wasn't really explained. And I wanted more from the world. And that ending was pretty fast. Um, so, four stars. Definitely do want to read the sequel. But I'm not sure where the sequel can go since the problem in this book was pretty much solved. But um, there definitely could be more to the twins. Um, because they don't really 
there's things that are revealed at the end of the story basically so i'm interested to see where this goes but i did give it a four star because of the pacing so yeah okay so the next batch of books are all review books from shadow mountain publications as i do work with them as a reviewer i have five books that i read from them for the month of february so the first one is going to be promised by leah garrett this is historical fiction um this book i don't remember what i gave it honestly where's my journal <laughs> terrible right um I, like i said i read a lot of books it's going to be hard for me to keep up with like of remembering each of these but i did read this at the beginning of the month i gave it four stars um this follows my Margaret, Margaret, excuse me, and Lord Williams. And Margaret has decided to square off a of love. She doesn't want to be loved. Um, she doesn't want to love because she was basically burned by love. Um, so she decides to seek out men for a marriage of convenience that does not involve love. And she runs across Lord Williams, who irritates the mess out of her. And things ensue in which they end up having to be married. And of course, you know things happen they break up they get back together i loved it i thought it was comical i thought margaret and lord williams together were just like the funniest thing ever and i loved the um connection that they had with each other so four stars definitely enjoyed this definitely would recommend it following that i read the wish and the peacock by wendy s4 this is going to be a middle grade magical realism contemporary novel i gave it three and a half star rating it was cool it was cute um, it follows Paige and her family um, in the farm. So I think her, if I remember correctly, her father dies and her mother decides to sell away the farm. But there is a injured peacock. There is a reporter. And she basically just learns that home is more than um, the location is really pretty much where your family is. I thought it was cute. thought it was sweet. Um, but I mean, it's, it's middle grade. So it was a cute, quick read. Okay, so the next book I read was What the Other Three Don't Know by Spencer Hyde. Um, this is going to be YA Contemporary. I gave this three stars. I wanted to really love this, especially because I read another novel from him called Waiting for Fits, and I truly enjoyed that book. But this fell flat for me with some things. Um, it basically follows four high school seniors that don't know each other, and they all have secrets. Um, one is an influencer, another is a jock, one is a loner, and one is, what is it? an outsider so um they're dealing with different things uh and they pretty much reveal it during the trip but i just i don't know there was something about the flow that i just didn't care for so yeah i then read willa in the well by chad morris and shelly brown gave us four stars it's a middle grade contemporary that talks about grief and loss and um how children can deal with it and i thought it was amazing it also has magical realism because there is a character that willa meets who is a whale and the whale's name is meg and they can actually talk to each other but um i thought it was cute thought it was awesome and it just talks about willa dealing with the grief of losing her mother and moving back home with her father and um her stepmom and step siblings so yeah Okay, the next book I read was Watch Hollow by Gregory Fanaro. Um, this was adorable. I gave it four stars. It follows Lucy and Oliver Tinker as well as their father. They pretty much have to go to this house and figure out um, how to save their town and I guess their father from the evil inside of the house. I also did have to read the sequel, which the sequel is somewhere over there and I don't want to grab it, but um, it was just as good, so yeah okay then i read queen of sheba by roberta kells roberta kells door um this is biblical fiction all about the queen of sheba and solomon king solomon excuse me um and honestly i dnf this book i don't even have a rating for this book there is something about this book that just mm, did not click with me i got 10 chapters nine chapters into page 98 i i couldn't do it i dnf it and normally when i dnf a book i know if i'm gonna give it a three star or a two star I don't even want to write this book um so I will give it another chance before I decide to pass this book along or something but mm, yeah DNF then I read Make Your Voice Heard in Heaven by Barry C. Black who is the chaplain of the United States Senate I gave this a four star this is a Christian nonfiction book all about prayer and I thought it was amazing I didn't give it a five stars just because I do know most of the things that he mentioned in here um and I also wanted a lot more scripture to be used but I thoroughly enjoyed it and definitely would recommend it. It's a short read. I did this as my daily devotional with my Bible reading. So um, I definitely would recommend it if you are looking for anything about prayer. Following that, I did read Goliath Must Fall. Now, this is not the actual book. This is the study guide. Um, the actual book is just a straight up white cover with um, black fonts instead of the white. So the black and the white are kind of like inversed. Um, but five stars. This was It was a reread for me. I love it. It's amazing. Um, it's all about learning 
the Goliaths in your life and learning to let them fall. The different Goliaths are like anger, rejection, comfort, um, addiction, and rejection. So it's phenomenal. And it basically comes from the story of David and Goliath. And it's all about understanding that um, in the story of David and Goliath, we are necessarily not David in our story. We're more like the Israelites who are scared of Goliath and Jesus is David in our lives. So this was awesome. Definitely would recommend it. I then read Living Lies by Natalie Walters. This is the first book in the Harvard Secrets, I think it is. I think it's Harvard Secrets. So if it's wrong, I'll put the correct um, trilogy name on the screen. But I ended up reading this and I enjoyed it. I gave this book a 4.25 star rating. Um, I read the sequel, which was Deadly... Deadly Deceit. Um, I read, sorry, I read that last month or so and totally enjoyed it. But this was awesome. Enjoyed it enough. Gave it 4.25 star rating. Then I went into reading The Weight by Devon Franklin and Megan Good. Again, another Christian nonfiction book. And um, this was pretty good. I gave it a four star just because, again, I wanted a lot more scripture to it. Um, but it was a great read for me. And the final book that I have for you guys. Actually, there is another book. <laughs> There's two books. So, um... I'm looking on my list because I definitely am missing a book because it was an ebook that I read. Actually, it was two ebooks that I read. So before I get into this last book, um, I then read Foul is Fair by Hannah Capen. Um, I had an arc for this and I gave it a 3.75 star rating. Um, a lot of people enjoyed it. I thought it was epic, but I also had some issues with it. So it's one of those books where I want to give it a full four star, but I can't. And I'm planning to reread it when I slow down on my review books. But um, yeah, I read that. That's a YA novel. And then I also read The Hope of Elantris by Brandon Sanderson, again, for the Cosmere Long um, for the months of February and March, where we were reading um, Elantris. And then with reading Elantris, we're also reading The Hope of Elantris, which is a novella, and The Emperor of Souls. I did not get a chance to read The Emperor of Souls, so I will be reading it this month in March. But um, I did read The Hope of Elantris, as is the novella to El Elantris, um, novella 1.5. And I did give it a four stars. I thought it was cute. It really just dives into Serene's, um, her little, I'm, I'm gonna call him a fairy. He's not a fairy. I don't remember what they're called. They're like little balls of light that talk. So in my mind, they're fairies. Can't remember exactly what he is. I'll put it on the screen. But it was just him telling his side of the story and um, seeing the future between Serene and Riordan. So yes, we have that. Okay, so I think that's pretty much the last one that I forgot, right? right um so moving on to the final book i read like flames in the night by connie lynn cassette this is the fourth and final book in her series of refuge series this was amazing Ugh. five stars five star read all the way loved it um if you're looking for biblical fiction historical fiction or christian fiction that deals with um espionage let's just say that um definitely check this out this is uh, uh, it's, <laughs> no words if you want to read my review it's down below i also have a reading vlog on my other channel so click the item screen to go to my other channel which is my christian channel um where i talk more in depth about this book and i also have a reading vlog on that channel but this was amazing in this cover you guys cannot tell me that this cover is not stunning but yes that's about 26 books that i read it's a lot of books I'm hoping I don't read that many books for the month of March. I most likely will because I have a lot of review books um, to get through. But epic reads, a lot of four and five stars. Um, I guess I can share with you guys my favorites because I did do a favorite spread um, in my book journal. So my favorites for nonfiction books, um, I mean, sorry, non-Christian books are going to be Slay by Brittany Morris. Five star. Loved it. My first five star of the month of February. Then it will be full disclosure because that book was out of my comfort zone and it educated me as well as made me warm and fuzzy. I love the romance. I love the family relationships and dynamic and it was phenomenal. Um, then the kiss quotient because it's an automatic five for me. Like automatic. I also enjoyed Children of Blood and Bone but again the Kiss Quotient and Children of Blood and Bone are both five star reviews for me so yeah. I did put the fifth season on this list as like a uh, honorable mention because it was a 4.75 star and it could have been a five but like I said that secondary writing POV was annoying to me. Um, And then we have Like Flames in the Night um, which was Biblical Fiction five star and then Goliath Must Fall was also five star but yeah pretty much that was it for February I had an excellent reading month excellent again I only did not get a chance to read I only did not get a chance to read is that English the only three books that I didn't get a chance to read 
were um a blade so black the bells and becoming by michelle obama i will be reading a blade so black this month for march i want to try to get to becoming in the bells i will probably move to april but i'm excited for march to see how many books that i read and um yeah i think that's it for now so i will see you guys in the next video bye <laughs>